guys, welcome back to the big sew along. I'm Ginny and here on my channel you will find me doing sew alongs as the name would suggest and I'm also doing other sorts of sewing tutorials or informational uh, videos such as reviews, that kind of thing. If that sounds like something that would be interesting to you then please hit subscribe, come back and see me every Tuesday and Thursday. Okay guys, today instead of doing a regular, just a straight pattern sew along like I have been doing, I feel like that last one, the katya skirt, was 42 minutes long and that to me is just too long. I personally can't watch a video for that long, so I shouldn't be making videos that long. I really am trying to keep these videos to 20, maybe 30 minutes, but I'd really like them to be at 20. So today, in an effort to sort of speed things up a little bit, we're going to do a little bit of a different tutorial. Um, I am going to do a uh, sew this look style, so, no, video, sew this look video. I um, found this top, it's here somewhere, I'll put it here somewhere, um, online the other day. It's from a company called Oska, O-S-K-A, I believe it's a German company. I really love their style. I loved everything on their website. Um, and it really inspired me to like just get back into my regular sewing routine. So that's what we're doing. Um, I want to reproduce this top. So I do have a beautiful piece of um, linen. I don't know if you can tell from this, but it's all, it's it's a linen gauze. It's really beautiful. Um, this came from the fabricstore.com. It's fabric underscore store.com. I will leave a link to them below and I got this probably two years ago so I don't know what they have available right now but this piece I got a couple of years ago um, this is their um, I believe it's I believe it's their their gauze I think it's actually called gauze um, or it might be sheer or lightweight on their website um, anyways it's the lightest weight that they have I love their stuff they have beautiful linen um, Sometimes it's a little bit linty, um, and that's all I really have to say about it that's bad. It's usually just lovely. Okay, so <clears throat> the pattern I'm going to use is this pattern from Merchant and Mills. It is the factory dress. It's been around for a long time. I purchased this one, well actually I made it up in May of 2015 for the first time. So I've had it for at least five years. Here's a little picture of the line drawing. I realize it doesn't really look very much like that shirt we're talking about, but what we're gonna do, it does have the center seam up the front, which the shirt in the photograph does, and I really wanted to maintain that. Um, I'm going to eliminate the pocket and the collar, and I'm gonna extend these sleeves. The sleeves are um, short on this, and in the picture from Oska, I, they're probably like elbow length. So I think if I add three or four inches, I should be good. They both have the rolled up cuff, so that's fine. Now, in terms of removing the collar, it's no big deal. I'm gonna remove the collar and sew the center seam all the way up, but that means that this top is not gonna fit over my head, because this is a round neck. So I am going to turn that into a scoop neck. If that all sounds like a whole lot of work for a really simple top, um, it might be, but for those of you who don't know, um, Merchant and Mills has recently, um, they didn't use to, and actually sh I shouldn't say recently because it's been a while since it was on their website. They now have um, most of their patterns available as PDFs. One of those patterns is a shirt addendum to this pattern. So if you already have this pattern, then you buy the shirt addendum, which is like four pounds or five pounds or something like that, whatever that is in your currency. Um, I don't know what it is here either. It's like $8 or $6, something like that. I was so excited I didn't pay attention. Um, anyway, so uh, it's uh, the only things you really need from this pattern are the collar and the sleeve. And for us, we're not using the collar. We're just going to use the sleeve. And even that, we're going to alter a little bit. Okay, so I am gonna show you how I do those alterations to make this pattern, and then I'm gonna sew it up on my own because it's actually not a difficult pattern to sew, and once you see the alterations I'm making, you'll totally get it. 
um, the pat this pattern has a facing and a collar obviously the shirt in the picture does not it has a bias binding and I really like that so I'm gonna do that um, which saves us having to deal with the facing um, this pattern the shirt version of this also has I don't know if I can show you on here has a little split like it comes longer than this the top of this dress and here at the bottom from the hem up a couple of inches there's a little bit of a split and I think I'm gonna maintain that even though it's not in my inspiration picture I actually really like that so we're gonna keep that then uh, next week I think we're gonna try to reproduce a pair of Oska pants also using a Merchant and Mills pattern I think not 100% sure about that, but I think that's what we're going to do. Anyways, all right, so now I'm just going to take you over to the cutting table, show you how I altered this pattern. Okay, so this is our front pattern piece. Um, you can see on here I've drawn in my new neckline, um, but I will show you, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll show you how I go about that when we get that far. For right now, I'm going to cut out most of this except for the actual neck. Um, we don't need this from here over. This is a facing, and we're not going to use a facing. We're going to use the bias tape and a wider neckline. So for the moment, I'm just going to fold that under on that line from that center line to this edge is 5 eighths of an inch. So we're just going to cut it out just like that. It doesn't come all the way over to the center front here it's actually if it continued up it would be higher than this and that is actually what I want I copied this um, neckline off of another pattern of, it's called the cuff top from the assembly line um, another one of my favorite patterns but I love the boat neck on that so I am going to um, use that and I just traced it on here I didn't cut my pattern because I am um, I want to keep this pattern as is, um, and this way, if you know, if I want to do this again, then great, I have it ready. Okay, so all I'm going to do is put this under the top piece of my pattern, just on top of that bottom layer. This particular linen is super um, wobbly. It's uh, a pretty loose weave. And it does not like to say where it is. So if you happen to get this particular one, just be aware of that. Okay, so from here over, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to mark this like this with my chalk paper, straight up like this. And then from here over, it really just needs to be straight. So I'm just going to use my ruler and mark that just like that. And I also have to make some notches in here, which I think I will do right now before this thing moves again. being 
that the back, remember the front was made to have a center front seam, so there was a seam allowance sort of built into the pattern already. The back is not like that. The back is meant to be a solid piece. I have no idea. I, I can't see the back of our inspiration shirt, but I kind of like the idea of having um, a seam allowance in the front, a uh, seam, a center front and center back seam. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put one in there, which means need to weight this down and because inevitably I will forget that I need a single ounce over there I'm actually gonna chalk it out before we start cutting so that means I'm gonna lay this here right on the edge at five eighths of an inch and just draw a line right there this is a piece that you get in the original um, factory dress pattern it does not come with the uh, shirt upgrade or whatever you want to call it anyways um, so I'm trying to get this all in here okay so you can see here this is the um, hem the actual hemline this is all folded under for a cuff we want to make this about, I measured on my arm, I want four extra inches. So I'm going to fold it on that line so that the cuff part, the whole hem part is underneath. And I am going to measure four inches down. thing we need to cut um, for our top is a few strips of bias just enough to go around your neckline and that's it okay so the first thing we're gonna do is just sew the center front and center back seams as you normally would um, on the front remember we have a little notch here where we're gonna stop sewing or start sewing and in the original pattern it would have you stop up here somewhere because you're gonna use a facing for this we're just gonna go from here all the way to the end and then we're gonna do the uh, back the same way with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. The rest of the pattern for the next few steps is just as it is in the pattern. So you sew your center front and your center back, then you're gonna do your darts, your shoulder seams, your sleeves, and then your side seams. Okay guys, so here is our top almost finished. There's there we go. Um, we saw all we really have left to do are the hems on both of our sleeves on the bottom and also uh, bias binding on the neck. So what I have done on the sleeves, both sleeves and the hem, is I pressed that raw edge under 3 eighths of an inch. On my sleeves I think I surged it. I'm not really sure why. I think I didn't really know how I was going to hem it, but that I don't need to do that. So. Along our little split here, what we're going to do is fold, this is the right side of our top, and on one side we're going to fold this split up, right up to the edge of that hem, right to the very 
end of that seam. We're going to sew along here. From there to there to the end, just like that. And we want that, we want this seam that we're going to sew right here to match up exactly with this one. And then we're going to do the same thing on, on this side. I'm going to turn that around. We're going to do the exact same thing on this side. Fold that up and stitch from the end of our split to the bottom of our hem, just like that. Then when we're done with that, all you're going to do is turn that right side out. Let's see if I can do it without sticking myself. You're going to turn it right side out and you'll have a nice finished edge on your split. And then all you're going to do is press this down the whole way around the seam allowance. I think it's an inch and a half, but we'll double check and um, top stitch all the way around and that will be finished. Um, or you could also, if you choose to, you could also blind hem it if you prefer to do that by hand or by machine, either way. Um, and then on the sleeves, I am just going to press my sleeves up and I'll tell you in just a second, I'm gonna measure that hem allowance. I'm just going to press, press that up and do the exact same thing on the sleeves. You can either machine stitch that down or you can um, hand stitch it, do an invisible hand stitch. For, looks like here, let's see, what is that? The cuff is one, two, uh, three inches. So once you turn this uh, seam, this hem allowance, which is like three eighths of an inch or a quarter even, the rest, this should be a three inch turnover and that's so you have a nice big cuff. So when you roll it up to the outside, you'll have, you won't be seeing like raw seams. Okay guys, so here we are. Um, so far I'm pretty happy with it, I think. <laughs> there are a couple of things I'm not crazy about. Um, one is my, um, my split in the front it just does not look very nice from the back well actually it would look a lot better if I cut all these threads off um, but I split into my seam allowance here to get it to lay flat under and I cut too far up so it's fraying a little bit and that's gonna be a problem when I launder this but um, I guess I'll deal with that later so all we have left is our bias binding and I think I showed you guys this before. We are gonna pre pre apply our bias binding to the back and fold it to the front. I really like a tiny bias, so my bias strips are cut one and a half inches wide, and then they're folded in half and pressed. That makes that three quarters of an inch. Now, just be really careful when you're using this because you can see, like on mine, just because it's so loosely woven, it's really easy for it to get stretched and it could get really narrow in some parts, so just be careful that you're not um, pulling on it too much as you're putting it around your neckline. Okay, so I'm gonna start at the center front, um, pin it around to the center back. center back again so now all I'm going to do is pin make sure that, that lays there nice and evenly I'm just going to pin these two ends together right where they meet here at the shirt and then I am going to cut off from that point I'm going to give myself myself three eighths of an inch so, I'll cut it right there. Yeah, cut it right there. 
And then I'm gonna unpin this. I'm gonna take these two open ends, open them out so they're right sides together. I'm gonna sew that at a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and then put it all right back on and sew my binding on. Press the entire thing to the front, flat and then to the front, and then do your edge stitching. And then we'll try this baby on. Well, there we go, guys. Oska by way of Merchant and Mills. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. Although I love the shape and um, the fabric, I feel like I did a few things that are just not sitting very well with me. I'm really not happy with the bias binding. Even though I tried to be really careful, it didn't come out very even, and I feel like I'm just going to have to take that off and redo it. I don't have time to do that now, but I will probably end up doing that. I really like the notch in the front. Overall, I like the fit. I think that this is pretty close to that picture, although um, my neckline also is maybe a little bit bigger. I think I would like it if it more was like that. Anyways. Um, I also feel like my sleeves actually, even after I lengthen them four inches, I feel like they should be like down here, but it is what it is. Um, we can always make another one. Um, anyway, I'd be curious to know what you guys think um, in terms of how close we came to hitting the mark on that picture. And on Tuesday, I think we'll try to make a pair of pants and, um, from another like Oscar picture or maybe another one. We'll see. <laughs> All right, guys.